Hey guys, welcome to another video and today I discuss 6 months of ownership of my MG4 SE standard range. I shall discuss the pros and the cons during my ownership and touch on other aspects like dealership experience, public charging and which MG4 is the best to buy. So let's get straight into this and discuss the pros. Design and build. This is a subjective one for sure, but even six months in, I love looking at this car. It's striking, I think this car looks better than most on the road, even some premium ones. And that's before we go inside the cabin. The cabin is fresh, minimalistic, and it really gives you a feel for a larger cabin. Not to mention there's a lot of storage in here too. There's some scratchy and shiny surfaces for sure, but have been tastefully applied and you'll be pleased to know they're holding up perfectly. As is the upholstery, handles, stalks, buttons, hinges, knobs, they're all solid with no sign of fatigue or rattles. Only the odd pen rattling around is what makes the noise in this cabin. The only wear I see is next to the gear selector where my wedding ring slides across the shiny surface, but it's minimal. If we head outside, the vehicle trim is in great condition with no scuffs or scratches, including the decorative cladding at the bottom of the doors, the boot lids too, the boots solid too, I even had a few mods like bonnet struts to improve the usability. Continuing outside of the car, the wing mirrors are still looking as good as new and as we head down the front, the headlights are still in good shape and working perfectly fine. As we head down to the four corners of the car, we've got the tyres and the wheel trims. Wheel trims, absolutely perfect condition. Then let's look at the front tyres. As you can see, barely any loss of rubber on them. And then we'll move over to the rear tyres, which are obviously driving this car from the rear motor. They take the, the hardest hit here, and as you can see, they are looking great as well. So next we'll look at the driving experience. My first experience of driving the MG4 consisted of a 20 minute test drive. And in that 20 minutes, I knew this car handled better than it should for its price point. It drove better than my previous car, and in some respects done better than my two and a half year Tesla Model 3. It's agile, pokey, but reassuring and soaks up the bumps and potholes like a premium car. And the reality is it continues to do that. The 50-50 weight distribution and the wheels pushed into each corner definitely help achieve this. And now the weather's better here in the UK, I'm thoroughly enjoying thrashing through the lanes and it does really well. But this is a daily driver for me and in most cases around the town and to work and does it incredibly well. Despite carrying a 51 kilowatt hour battery, this car is reasonably quick. I don't ever use sport mode on this car as it's pretty pokey and standard, but I've tested the 0 to 60 and I've clocked it at seven seconds. And that was with a cold battery, but that's a video for another day. Now this falls into both pros and cons. So a little more of that later, but for now, let's stick with the good bits. LFP batteries are chemically more stable and this comes at a cost with charging and discharging. But even with that in mind, this LFP battery does reasonably well. On a cold day with no preconditioning, you can easily achieve 40 to 60 kilowatts on a rapid charger, and 85 with a well heated battery pack. And the charging curve is great, beating its own recommended 10 to 80%. I'll link the video above where I did this. If you go for the long range battery option, you can easily hit 135 kilowatts with the right battery temperature. In the colder months around zero degrees Celsius, with mixed driving, I'm able to get around 140 miles from the full battery. Now we're seeing double figures in the temperatures. I'm now able to get around 170 miles, but that is going up and up. And this leads me on to my next point, the advantages of LFP batteries. As these are chemically more stable and have a slow diffusion rate, I can make the most of the whole battery pack. And this means being able to charge to 100% every day. It's reassuring that charging to 100%, it's not going to leave a detrimental scar on the battery longevity. And it's a car I intend to keep in the family for years. So this is quite important to me. So let's move on to software. Now this is a very subjective one, but over the past six months, 
I've generally had no issues with the software whatsoever on my MG4 SE standard range. I am aware that some, especially on the trophy spec, have encountered issues with some of the driving assistance packages, but it's not impacted this car. Apart from the failed iPhone cables, everything has worked really well. Maybe less is more. Admittedly, some of the driver assistants like Lane Assist and Traffic Jam Assist aren't near polished as its rivals. I do believe MG will sort this over time, as it's all in software. So next we've got Vehicle to Load. Now this is a really underrated tool, and in the six months I've had my MG4, I've used it a handful of times. Most notably on a recent trip to the forest for Mother's Day. And it worked effortlessly well. I wasn't powering a party or anything, but just the small bits and pieces we took with us on the day worked effectively well. And this is a tool which is really helpful. I've used it with circular saws, and I've also used it while we've been out and about on trips. So we've rolled into the last one, which is safety and price. Now, when I purchased the car, there was nothing out there in terms of recommendations from national bodies, safety awards, cars of the year, that kind of thing. But thankfully, the MG4 has won a host of awards. But most importantly, and even though it's bamboozling in those car of the year awards, the most important one there is obviously that Euro NCAP 5 star safety award. Now, as I mentioned, I brought my MG4 without any of these credentials, which it's now earned. And I brought my MG4 during the inflated car price period in 2022. Used car prices were nearly the price of new ones and long waiting lists were a big problem. And I had sold my previous car, which was a Volkswagen Touran, for the price I paid for it four years ago. I know, it's absolutely bonkers. I knew I wanted an EV and £26,000 price tag for an entry level EV with the kit which comes with this car, including V2L, I could not turn that down. There still isn't many alternatives near this price point, unless you want an out of warranty used EV. The landscape of the used EV market has changed somewhat since then. The market is flooded with used EVs, and it's more achievable to get an EV than ever before. And despite even reductions of new prices, I still feel this price for the MG4 SE standard range is fantastic. And if you're really enjoying this video, a like and a sub to the channel would be wonderful. Now, of course, that brings me on to the cons. So let's begin with manufactured defects. Now, I am fortunate to report that I have very little wrong with this car. And all cars come through with defects. My Tesla Model 3 was a perfect example of that with many defects. And they were dealt with swiftly and Tesla rectified all of those, including some new faults, which again, they have rectified. Now, my MG4 has two defects with it. The first one is the under tray underneath the rear motor on the car. Now, this is a common problem it seems like a lot of people have suffered with this and this is an issue which mg have explained to me that it will be replaced it's on back order so it's going to be a little while to get it and this is quite an important part it does protect the rear motor but it also provides aero for the car so i'll be intrigued to see if it improves the efficiency of the vehicle once the new one is fitted the second issue is relatively a new one actually it started appearing uh, about six weeks ago and mg is fully aware of this and again it does involve another replacement and it's again on the back order um, but if you take a look closely here at the dashboard behind the driver's binnacle and the infotainment screen you can see a bubble very clearly i'm going to place this 20 pence piece next to it to give you a reference point and there's two more further bubbles one to the left of it and one close to the back of the infotainment now these are cosmetic nobody else can see them but me it's one of those things but mg can see them and like i said they've said that they're going to replace the dashboard it's on back order uh, but it's not doing any harm and i can very patiently wait until that part arrives so yes, let's move on to the next one, which is software. And yes, we've already discussed software once, but this is the negative side to it. And firstly, I mentioned this in my one month review. 
and that's the driver presets. Now presets are really important because they capture your personal settings so you don't have to reset them every time you jump back in the car. Now I've only had one update which was for the safety recall and that code number for that update was AS22 TB061 and those presets still haven't been introduced as a permanent solution so I'll wait to see if that happens but it is incredibly frustrating because I like to have certain settings in the car I like it on eco mode if I can and I also like to have different pedal and steering responses the second part is using the app to remote control the car with things like preconditioning and also accessing HVAC while the car is plugged in so the first example would be the car's plugged in overnight it's very cold in the morning so I want to make sure that the battery has some preconditioning and whether you schedule it or hit the start heating button as you can see here we get the error pop up straight away this also happens when you schedule the preheating as well it just doesn't switch on and unfortunately the same happens with the HVAC if you want to precondition the cabin and switch the, that heating and the fans on we get the same error message popping up about it not being able to successfully connect and finally we have charging now since taking delivery I've tested the ultra fast DC charging on this LFP MG4 on multiple occasions I've documented this and have done a couple of videos I'll link those above and in the description the charging curve is really good on this car it took 36 minutes to go from 10% to 80% which I think is absolutely brilliant and actually beat MG's recommended time for charging in that time frame but the problem and the shortfall is that MG advertised speeds which just aren't achievable and I've gone out my way and tried to replicate achieving the speeds they advertise and despite what I try preheating yo-yo in the car I just can't get anywhere near the advertised speed this could be that the battery's just not at the right temperature and maybe the summer months will help with that but I have seen other YouTubers try to do the same charging in very hot climates and they've hit the same ceiling as I have. Now that kind of gives me two ideas what's going on here. One, it's software locked. Or two, the car just can't achieve those speeds full stop. Now I have done a video about this and I'll link it above as well. But regardless of whether anyone needs these peak speeds or not, it's crucial that MG and dealerships are being transparent and say to consumers, by the way, the LFP battery pack, it doesn't achieve certain speed or it does achieve this speed, but you have to do this to get to it in these conditions. Now, I'm really hopeful there is software that is controlling this and at some point with an update, this will be unlocked and we can get to the charging speeds which have been advertised. So to very quickly summarise my ownership experience the last six months, well firstly the pros really outweigh the cons here. They really do and a lot of the cons are software based which MG can sort over time. They can fine tune them, nothing's ever perfect straight out of the box and this is a brand new EV to market only six months ago. The car is absolutely great to drive, it's nimble, it's quick it's really really planted to the road it's fun to drive it's very spacious inside it's got a fairly generous sized boot and all the interior and the exterior parts are standing the test of time really really well in terms of efficiencies in the winter with sub-zero conditions you're definitely going to have to make the most of battery preconditioning for those longer journeys just to make the car more and more efficient but as the climate is reaching double figures now and it continues to head northwards I definitely see much better efficiencies and in the summer months I expect to hit the WLTP figures for this vehicle with driving figures like 4 to 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour and lastly because of the price of this vehicle I think it's definitely a car worth considering and I certainly recommend it myself and lastly the controversial one following six months ownership which MG4 would I buy well I'm a big fan of the trophy interior and the extra features it offers and the long-range NMC battery pack is definitely very attractive 
but I think for the price point and being able to charge to 100% every day, the SE standard range is the one for me. And as soon as you climb into the mid £30,000 mark, you can walk away with a year old Tesla Model 3, which has all the bells and whistles you would ever need. And that's it for my six months of ownership video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you enjoy the content, a sub to the channel would be wonderful. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.